All right, and we're back with another draft of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. Um, pack one, pick one. We've got a couple options here. Nothing too exciting. Um, the first of which is going to be Naomi Pillar of Order. Um, in black, white, or some kind of you know green multicolor deck, this can be a pretty fine curve topper that allows you to get some value making two twos every turn. Strong. Um, Tamiyo Safekeeping is a pretty solid green card that I certainly wouldn't mind picking up at some point, if I was in green, of course. Um, and then Eater of Virtue is essentially just the card Bone Splitters at 1 mana equipment, plus 2, plus 0, oh, equip 1. Uh, not an exciting pack. I think I'm going to take the Eater of Virtue just to keep me open. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily the best card. Alright, uh, another Naomi Pill of Order is interesting. Um, that being said, I still would like to avoid committing if I can, and there's a pretty sweet Circuit Mender here, so I think I'll be running the Eater of Virtue and the Circuit Mender in any deck that I ended up playing here today, so I'll just pick that up too. Why not? It's a pretty open start, maybe not the most powerful start, but I feel like it's okay. Um, we could always be in some kind of, like, the black-white deck, like in the Naomi's. Um, it could end up in, you know, red-blue artifact stuff. We could end up in black-red. Um, all kinds of options. <clears throat> yeah, the Eater of Virtue has a bunch of other text on it, which does... Oh my god! <laughs> this is the third Naomi Pillar of Order. Man, can you imagine if we just snatched up every single one of those? That would have been nuts. Um, I mean, is it time to pick it up? Uh, we could take up a Virus Beetle, too. It's perfectly fine. Um, it might actually even be more important. Oh, it's tough. Hmm. So I think this card is substantially better than the Virus Beetle, but Virus Beetle is just so important to make um, those black artifact decks work. Um, hmm. I think I'm just going to take the Beetle. I, I I don't know if I can rely on um, this deck being open at all once I've passed two of them already. Uh, I'll just take the Virus Beetle and be happy. Um, okay. So, our options here, I guess, are... What? Season of Renewal... Clawing Torment as a removal spell. If we end up in like an aggressive deck. Um, Shrine Steward is probably fine. I kind of like the Clawing Torment though. I think we're leaning in on some kind of black deck here. Something like black red artifacts or something along those lines. Um, yeah, I think I'm pretty happy picking that up here. Huh. Okay. Well... Oh my god, after passing all those Na all of those Naomi's, I think Fall of Lord Conda is the best card in the pack here. Um, maybe I'm kind of psyching myself out. I mean, the people <laughs> people who are passing to me also know that they passed two Naomi's, and maybe they just are totally off a of black-white deck at this point now. Um, so that's a good option. Thing of Shigeki and Geothermal Kami are fine commons here. Um, Roadside Reliquary might also be fine. Um, and then any of these, these two artifacts are okay, I guess. I'll take the Fall of Lord Conda. I mean, if the deck is open, then the deck is open, right? So, um, uh, for the follow-up here, uh, if I wanted to try to get into white, we'd be looking at Moth Rider Patrol, which I'm not excited about. Um, red looks like it's got some stuff flowing. Uh, I could take the Simeon Sling and say, you know, try to put a stake into black, red, artifact aggro. Uh, all of three of these commons are fine in that deck. I think the sling is the most important, though. Tempered and Solitude is also worth considering, but I've just not been impressed by it, so I'd rather go down this road. Okay. Um, yeah, once again, I feel like red could be open here with an Aki Ember Keeper. It's pretty sweet with the Simeon Sling, because you can equip this to something and then trade it off and then get your 1-1. Iron Apprentice 2 um, could be pretty good in some kind of artifact aggressive deck. In fact, that might actually be the pick here. 
because I think that helps us really stay the most open. Tails Master Sashiro I think is the best card in this pack, but I don't think we're really interested in playing green here today. Um, hmm. You know what? I think I will go for the Iron Apprentice. I think it's going to be really good in any deck we end up playing here. Yeah, green looks open, as it always is. <laughs> um, that being said, I think our pick for this deck is probably just going to be the Blade Master. Kind of stay open, stay in black. Okay, another Iron Apprentice. Sure. Yeah, we're just going all in on the Artifact Synergy deck here. Um, so what are we looking for then? We're looking for um, the Shock that sacrifices Artifacts. We're looking for um, the Experimental Synthesizers. We're looking for... Yeah, kind of curve toppers like these guys, I guess. None of them are especially good, though. Uh, maybe I could take the ninjutsu guy. Sure. Yeah, none of the Naomi's wield, of course, uh, which I didn't expect them to. But that would have told us that the black-white deck is wide open, and it is certainly not. Uh, a little bit of a rough start here. Not especially impressed with where we're at. It's kind of funny, I think we're really maximizing the utility of our Bone Splitters here. Uh, both these are actually fine picks for us. I'll take this. Um, maximizing the Eater of Virtue here, because we've got all these cheap little guys that are uh, able to, to rumble and, and get meaningfully upgraded by a Bone Splitter effect. So that's nice. Um, okay, Circuit Mender is great. Long Reach of Night is great. Uh, Simeon's Sling is fine. This Goofy Mythic... Um, hurts us way more than it would hurt any of our opponents. Uh, killing all the one mana cards is not particularly relevant. And three mana for wait a couple turns to get that three three is just yeah. We're I'm not not interested. Um, huh? I mean, are we really in on the artifact theme enough for to take the circuit mender over the long reach? I do like the long reach a lot. Um. I think I'm, uh, I think I'll take the long reach. I just think the card is meaningfully better. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Whoa. Okay. Um. Well, this blue card is kind of better than all of our red cards. So, uh, I think I'll just take it. Let's see if we can try to pivot into ninjas or something. We. I mean, these one drops help. Hmm. Oh boy. Well, this could help with our kind of artifact slant that we got going on here. Um, not going to be great if we try to go into like this blue black ninjas type thing, but it does keep us open. It rewards us for all of our artifacts we picked up. I think our only other pick would be like the completion. Uh, that thing? Yeah, no thanks. I'll take the trash box. Sure. Okay, uh, best card in the pack is a blue card, so that's what I'll pick up. Um, I mean, I could go for more Iron Apprentices, I guess, but we just don't have any payoffs for them yet, so... I am happy to pivot away from this impending dumpster fire. Um, <laughs> uh, how, many, how many Iron Apprentices is too many Iron Apprentices? Um, I feel like one Iron Apprentice is probably too many Iron Apprentices, but hey, you know what? <laughs> We're going all in today. We're going all in. Um, hmm, okay. This card it would be great if we ended up in red, because all of our random Iron Apprentices naturally pump it up, which is sweet. Usually this card is quite bad, but I'll take the one Iron Apprentice. Um... That being, what are we picking up if we're in blue? I guess this thing? Oh, God. I really do want to play blue here. Yeah, I'll try it. Hmm, okay. Um, familiar, Crab, Calling Torment, Brute Suit are all playable, I guess. 
going to make our deck, though. I think the Brute Suit's probably where we want to be. I mean, our three-drop slot's a little bit clogged up at the moment compared to our two-drop slot. But I think the Brute Suit is just a solid card, and we have a bunch of random bad creatures to crew it up. So, sure. Why not? Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. What is this deck? What is happening? Uh, sure. Oh my god. It's got all the random artifact stuff. I mean, there has to be some, like, artifact synergy payoff that I'm not remembering in blue. Right? <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, what are we going to do with all these Iron Apprentices? I don't even know. Maybe there's, like, that one black um, uh, card that lets you sacrifice your creature for value. Sure, I'll take a random ninja. Sure, I'll take a random ninja. Huh. Yeah, blue feels like it's definitely more open than anything else going on. Um, maybe we just shouldn't have been in black. And that's where we messed up here. We should have been, like, blue-red artifacts. Wow. Late completion. Yeah, actually, let's start thinking about that. Hmm. I think it's just been a really weak draft overall. Like, we just haven't seen very many powerful cards um, in any of the colors, really. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, what is our black even giving us right now? Virus Beetle? That's great. Uh, a bunch of random junk? Not so great. Blade Master? Don't care. I don't... I don't think I care about really any of these cards all that much. The Long Reach of Night is by far the best of them. I guess the Virus Beetle will be next. Um, hmm. And then what's on our red camp? Uh, not a whole lot either. Oh my god, and then we get... <laughs> we open up Green Mythic into Blossom Prancer. Uh, yikes, yikes, yikes. You already dead. It's probably actually solid in our deck, strangely enough. Um, maybe the Prowler, too. Hmm. Well, I'm not really looking to pivot into green, that's for sure. Um, so I'm sadly going to have to pass both those green bombs. This white card, too, is also solid in our deck. Look how many artifacts we have. We can just slam that on Iron Apprentices. I think we should have to take the Prowler, though. Oh, <laughs> oh this deck is torturing me. It's absolutely torturing me. Look at this. Wow. Man. What's our other option here? Just Kami of Terrible Secrets? Is that something that we can actually pull off? I guess sort of. Man. This card is just so much better though. Three mana searches up a land and gives you a three four vigilance that makes one ones. I think we just can't though. I think we just gotta stick to our guns and do something. Um, wow. Getting a third pick Blossom Prancer. Oh my god. Yeah. We should have pivoted into green a long time ago. Um, well, here's that Sacrifice spell, I guess. Um. Yeah, I'm still not going to do it. I'm not going to take the bait on the green stuff. Um, okay, well, there's our first Voltage Surge if we wanted to play red, but that's not happening. Um, I don't mind a suit up. We've got all these random one drops and two drops. So it's probably fine. Okay. Another Kami of Terrible Secrets. We're really low on enchantments, though, in order to make those things work. We have a few. Well, they're like five or something. I guess that's barely enough. Sure. Huh, okay. 
Man, look at this. I mean, I guess our seat was supposed to be <laughs> the opposite of what we're doing, and it's supposed to be like green, white enchantments or something. Uh, but here we are, picking up Clawing Torment, I guess. Okay, I'll play that. Sure. Okay. Um, well, that could be nice if we actually ended up splashing the Fall of Lord Conda or something. Um, but this is also a much needed source of card advantage. Yeah, I'll go with this. Not quite sure what the cut is yet, though. What a bizarre deck we're playing today. Absolutely bizarre. We can cut that. We're in 24. Eh, this deck does have a lot of kind of clunky top end stuff. Maybe we don't want to. Eh, actually, we're not. We're, we're topping out at 5 mana. We got a million 1 drops. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we do just run 24-16. Kinda hope we get there. Now, I really want to hit my 4s on curve, though. That's the problem. Hmm. Maybe the Acquisition Octopus is not quite cutting it. Specialist is fine. Could cut like a Kami of Terrible Secrets. I feel like that's our late game though. Trash bot's fine. Hmm. See. If we did run I feel like we want to lean a little bit more on black, I guess. For the early game. What did I just click on by accident? There it is, okay. Um, yeah, you know what? I think I'm just going to run it like this. We'll go 16 lands. Hope for the best. Um, do I go 7-9? Yeah, that feels right. I mean, we do have a double blue and no double black. But on the other hand, the black is like almost the majority of our early game here. Hmm. Yeah, I think it's that's, that's tough too. You know what? I am gonna go get eight eight. All right, <laughs> let's uh, let's try it. I don't know how I feel about this deck. It is it is something else. I feel like the more I draft this format, the less I end up doing the smart correct decks and the more I end up doing these bizarre Iron Apprentice Tamiya's Completion deck. <laughs> the unholy combination. Alright, well that's a that's a bomb. Ooh, okay. Alright, blue black bad artifact mirror match. Are we are we doing it? We even have the wombo combo bad creature and to sacrifice the bad creature. That's pretty sweet. Uh, I am going to get in with the Iron Apprentice, I think. There's no way they're blocking it. Yep. And they're not going to want to run their virus. They're familiar to the, our virus beetle, so it just feels like a free attack. They are going to want to draw land here, though. The opponent's probably still on some ninjas thing and they're gonna have a ninja to back the puzzle maker which is really where they don't do not want to be um see this is an instant right initial cost sack an artifact or creature you gain life okay so i'm gonna just get in free roll attack why not they're definitely blocking but we can bluff the you're already dead 
And then just sack it, because we're going to sack it anyways to try to hit our land drops. Oh, sweet. Uh, yeah. Yep, there we go. Sweet, okay. There's our land. Mm-hmm. So get their, they get their scry in here, and I'm sure they're going to ninjutsu something annoying in. Really would like to hit another land. We can go, you know, completion into Kami, draw our card. All good stuff. Yep. No ninjutsu. Okay. That's interesting. And we get our land. Um, yeah, so I think I'll just do what I mentioned a second ago, pass it back, in case, you know, they're leaving up the counter magic or something. Let's go to their turn, and then before they attack, so that way they can't ninjutsu it away, uh, we'll completion. Whoa. Okay. Interesting. You got me. Um, just lock it down now, though. Yep. Why, oh, thank you. Yeah, and then we can Kami Terrible Secrets next turn, get closer to our Behold the Unspeakable. Opponent still scared of attacking. Okay. Maybe we'll just run out the Behold now that we've drawn that land. Uh, well, I mean, our opponent is leaving up counter magic again. Um, yeah, here, let's run out Iron Apprentice. No priority, okay. But yeah, we're good. Draw our card. Yep, try to trade it off. Yeah, I guess our opponent probably just has a bunch of, like, what do they have in their hand if they're doing nothing on three here? Oh, that's annoying. Whenever you activate ninjutsu, look at the top three, one in your hand. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm all that scared of this. Let's run out our behold. All their creatures are tiny. Let's get in with everybody. I'm pretty sure they're going to try to block our 3-4 with their 4 In which case, we'll finish it off with a clawing torment. Mm-hmm. Excellent. And goodbye. Yep. Alright. This is working out strangely well. <laughs> yeah, okay. Ninja 2 coming in. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's a good one. Okay, what do we got here? So... Yeah, they just ran that back out. Um... I'll put in the land. Draw the other thing. Sure. Um, probably not gonna play it yet, though. Probably actually want to save this ninjutsu back. The, um... The unspeakable when it comes out. Um... Okay... Yeah, I think I'm just gonna get in with everybody here. Yep. Okay. Because, yeah, I can run out... ...two different sort of blockers here. Of course, if they find a way to deal with the Circuit Mender, I can just crew up the suit. So I don't feel like I'm at risk of getting hit this turn by the ninja. Weird deck. Very weird deck that we're playing here. Mm hmm Yep, as I thought. Good. Ooh, that's a good draw. Re 
refill our hand a bit. Very nice. Um, I'm gonna just... Ooh, do I fire it off now? I think I will just fire this off now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Don't need these lands. Okay. Um... Yeah, let's crew up. And leave up our suit up here. Yeah, opponent's in a tough spot. I could have maybe specialist back their hacker to kind of guarantee more extra damage. Um, or like try to actually go for the win here. Uh, but I feel like they're going to have to essentially chump chump here or something. And we can always just suit up to go for the win as well. Uh-huh, okay. So, what are we? We're doing five damage right now. If we suit up the mender, we go for lethal. I'll try it. If they want to interfere with this, we're going to have to get rid of our circuit mender, and that's just also a disaster for them, so. Alright, opponent's giving us the GG's. Did we get there? Okay. Yeah, don't care about that. Alright, we did. Sweet. <laughs> oh, this deck. This deck. This deck. All right, that that was interesting. Let's run it back. I always feel really bad playing those Iron Apprentices because they just are such low impact cards. But I mean, it was doing great that game. Uh, we got to see the you know sack it to the uh, card draw spell. We got to see them crewing up um, brute suits, um, threatening to make awkward blocks for our opponent or awkward attacks. So overall, pretty happy with how that's turning out. All right, what we got? All right, good enough for me. No two drop is a little bit sad, but we're curving out with bad cards and that's what we came here to do. Is this for the next set? Cool. Yeah, I'm pretty excited for the uh, the next set, New Capenna. That should be really interesting. But definitely sad to see um, this set leave. I feel like I feel like I could play this set for another few months at least. It's just so complex. The the drafts are are really interesting. The 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 gameplay is fantastic. Um, yeah, I'll stay back on defense. Okay. Opponents can't attack right now, right? Oh, they are. Yeah, I'll trade. Sure. I mean, of course, you don't get any value off that or whatever, but I did not really expect to get much value off this, so if we can just trade card for card with our one drop, that's fine. I'm actually a little bit surprised they went for that attack there. What does that mean about their hand? Maybe they're just worried about, you know, us having creatures as the ninjas deck that they're pretty confident that we want to keep our creatures around. Wow, were they just trying to keep our board clear? That's interesting. Interesting question as to whether they run out of the Kami. Uh, looks like they're going to ninjutsu right now. And given that, I think I do want to run out of the Kami of Terrible Secrets without getting our card draw, just so that we can stop getting hit by these random small creatures. Yeah. We just have nothing that we want to completion yet. Mm-hmm. 
Okay. Sure. Yep, yep, yep. Alright, um, I'm feeling pretty good about just slamming the Behold here. And even though I could get a free attack in, I think I'm going to skip out on that. Um, for ninjutsu reasons. We just want to put them in a position where if they want to ninjutsu something back, they're going to have to suicide one of their creatures into our kami. Seismic wave, huh? Hmm. Modern Age is coming down next turn. So, that's probably going to be our target for the completion, unless they play something relevant. Not the best completion target, for sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, just the phone doesn't have all that much going on here. A lot of kind of cheap, aggressive stuff, and didn't really quite get there. Mm-hmm. Let's get our card draw online. Uh... I guess the Infiltrator is something. I feel like it's so bad though, I'm gonna bought them both. Ah, that's a little better. Um, okay. I think I'm gonna go... Clawing Torment on the Hacker. Oh no, does the opponent have like the Planar Incision? No, okay. And I'm gonna go for the attack with the Kami. Mm -hmm. If they have nothing, then they'd have to trade off both their creatures for it, so I'm feeling pretty confident in this, that they're just going to take it, and ninjutsu it back, yep. Now the Kami's in our hand, we want to run out our artifact, that way we can card draw off our Kami. What does our opponent have for interaction here that they keep having priority? Two mana, blue instant. Or one mana, I guess. Yeah, the only thing I can really think of is like the planar incision. The two mana exile thing, bring it back, put a counter on it. Ooh. <laughs> That's fun. Um. Hmm. Yeah, let's run out our artifacts here. I mean, there's like the two mana counter creature thing, but then they wouldn't have priority right now, right? Um, what else, what else, what else? I don't think there's like a cheap bounce spell or something in this format. Um, maybe flash creatures, I don't know. I can't think of what they could have here, honestly. Oh! Okay. Interesting. So they went for the counter spell in the brute suit. That's a bit surprising. Especially since we don't have great ways to counter it. Maybe they were scared of us having artifacts for a Kami of Terrible Secrets, but then they would just counter the Kami of Terrible Secrets, right? Um, maybe they're just trying to get value, tempo value here. Something like that. So, what does the Eater Virtue actually do? It picks up keywords, right? So, flying, first strike, double strike, that touch, haste, sex, proof, indestructible, life, link, menace, protection, reach, trample, vigilance. Okay. So none of our creatures have any of those things, so that doesn't quite matter. It's just kind of our, just a, a bone splitter, which is fine. Um, not doing a whole lot on the board at the moment. Uh, we are going to get our Behold the Unspeakable back, which is going to be pretty sweet. Looking forward to that. Um, at that point, we should definitely be holding back our lands in our hand. Uh, okay, opponent attack, no ninjutsu. So they're out of that, at least. And that thing. Sure, you got it. Now, do they have... They do have artifacts to bring back with that, right? This bling. Okay. Uh, safe play would be to just completion that thing. So that way the... Oh my god, I t 
possible. He just ran out that land again. Why did I do that? Um, <laughs> but I think I'm going to go for the higher upside play. And get this blocker out here. Um, might as well put the Eater Virtue on something. I suppose on this thing is fine. And you know what? Why don't we just try to get in with it, actually? Might as well. Move away a land. And yeah, if they trade it off for the Vector Glider, oh yeah. I'm perfectly happy about that. Mm -hmm. And then I suppose we'll just put it on... Uh, how about we'll put it on that thing? Go ahead. Now flying is really the most important keyword to pick up on the Eater. So, and the vision of the Unspeakable is just such a high priority target for them. Um, given that it's just this big flyer that's going to threaten to close up the game. So I feel like putting the Eater, eater on that, all else equal, is probably slightly better. Just because they're probably going to try to kill it anyways, and then our Eater can now give everything flying. Now, I think this is really kind of the pivotal turn here. Whether they're able to, you know, survive the vision, to, you know, attack with their... Um, what is this? Heiko Yamazaki. Um, but I think we're doing pretty well here. I think we might actually be closing out this game soon. Especially if they have nothing. And, uh, I mean, we are getting roped a little bit, so that's a good sign. Sure. Sure, sure. Yeah, th this card looked like it was going to be kind of the linchpin of the Artifact Dagger decks and did not quite get there, in my opinion. Uh, I'm going to run out Kami. I know I shouldn't be playing cards before I attack with the Vision, but this one replaced itself, so. Uh, Counterspell? No. Okay. I just want to get some more information here. Okay. Good to know. Let's get in. Fight. Sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um. Hmm. No attacks. I think I am going to run out the octopus, um, so that I can try to reconfigure it onto the vision next turn. Because it looks like the, they're not going to have any ways to get rid of that. I could also play out a land and then completion something, but I just don't have anything that I feel like targeting at the moment. This might be the the one time I'm happy to, <laughs> to cast an acquisition octopus. Normally, I just find this card to be so, so slow. Like, if you're a ninja's deck or something, like, and you want to put this on your 1-1 flyer, then we're talking 3 mana to cast, 2 to reconfigure, just to give your 1-1 flyer the, the ability to draw cards, and then any interaction that your opponent has just immediately tanks that whole plan. And uh, the ninja's deck just really wants to be aggressive and tempo-y. Um, then, of course, the artifact deck, which is the only other place the octopus would really find a home um, is also trying to be aggressive in ninja -y, right trying to do kind of what our opponent's doing you know get the simian slings with the hover bikes and the hackers and all those kinds of things and um it just doesn't have a home in my opinion um opponent is still in the tank about what to do here I can't imagine that they have that many options, though. Maybe they're thinking about... Hmm. Okay. Sure. I think the best thing that they could do at this moment, probably, would have been to, like, get in with the bike, ninjutsu it back, and then tap down my vision again for another turn. Um, but, looks like they can't do that quite yet. Uh, they did decide to put the counter on the Heiko Yamazaki, so... That, to me, means that they're going to trade it off for a comic terrible secrets right now, so they can get back a sling or something. Ooh, and they are going aggro with the bike, okay.
Hmm, this thing is going to threaten to draw cards, which is annoying. Oh, is this not an attack with the Heiko? Yeah, I, mean, I feel like that this is their, their last chance, probably, to get value out of it, so if I were them, I definitely would do this trade here. Oh, wait, did they not get their artifact? How does it work again? Attacks alone, oh! <laughs> yeah, they don't get their value out of that, actually, because it has to attack alone in order to get the artifact back. That's awkward. Alright, time to suit up the octopus and... Yep. Get in with our vision. Mm-hmm. Interesting question whether we actually play out a land here. It helps us kind of keep our protection up. I think I am going to run out of land here. Um, and the reason for that is even though we're reducing the you know, power and toughness of our vision, we're still two turn clocking them. And I like having the bargain and the completion up. So that way, you know, they have some kind of removal spell or something, we just bargain it back. And it's all good. Um, okay. So that's going to prevent our Kami from blocking here. They got nothing else in their hand. Their shapers are going to get pumped up. I feel like I could complete something here. Um, what am I going to complete? See, this can't tap yet, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Okay. Let's see, watch them crew the bike, probably. And then I think we're just going to... Um, actually, wait, no, we won't burn a completion, right? Because we don't want to get lower on cards here. We are going to go down a card if we cast this. And then we go up for our draw step. So we're still two, two turn clocking them. Um, I am just going to tap down the hover bike. For that reason. Weird that they tapped the guide bot to crew the bike. Uh, power to him, I guess. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, oh, maybe because they're trying to keep that block up. Okay, let's get in. Yep. Nice. Um, I think we're past the point where we're really trying to, you know, ninjutsu back vision. So I am actually just going to run this out. Just to be extra safe and get rid of our opponent's attackers. So that we can maximize, maximize our chances of uh, surviving this turn here. Which I think is just so likely, because... We can completion something, and then with our car card draw next turn, our vision is going to get pumped up back to six again. So even if we run out our removal spell here, they're still um, on a one turn clock. So, feeling pretty good about this so far. Yep, that looks desperate to me. What you got? Man, nothing. Yep, mine as well. Complete. Yep. GG. Alright, well, <laughs> again, I am pleasantly surprised that this deck is actually doing something. So, hell yeah. Two and oh. Ooh, this deck gets to uh, 
four or five wins, I'm going to be very happy about it. I think uh, in order for this deck really to come together, I think we needed to maybe get like another Moon Circuit Hacker. Um, that way we can go like Iron Apprentice on one. Uh, and then just do it back on two, replay it, and kind of have some of those powerful aggressive starts. Um, unfortunately, this is the opposite of a powerful aggressive start. Both of these cards are kind of dead. We have the correct mana, but I just cannot keep this. Um, better. And... Hmm. That's a tough one. What do we put back here? I could see an argument for the Octopus. I could see an argument for the Prowler. Not the Beetle, though we need the Beetle. I think maybe the Clawing Torment. I'm gonna just going to ship a land. I like all these cards. Ooh, okay. The world's greatest Clawing Torment right here. Yeah, get that out of here. Would have been nice to run out the Iron Apprentice, but we just cannot allow that to happen. It'd be such a disaster. Yeah, okay. Um, yep, I'll just beetle you. Wow! They just pitched a Blossom Prancer to the beetle? Oh my god. Maybe they just... that was their only land left or something? I am very confused. Uh, well anyways, I'll just run out the octopus here and get in. Uh, because whatever they decide to play here, we can Prowler to make their block awkward. Okay. Okay. Um... sure. I guess we don't even... Need the Prowler, huh? Um... Right, I'll just get in here. See what happens. Nothing. Okay. Okay. Um... Blade Master or Suit? I think I ran out of Suit. And Apprentice. Wow. Nothing. Okay. Dockside Chef is not exactly the, um the turn 4 play you want. Okay. Yeah, and now we can ninja do something back with a Prowler to trade off our Octopus for that Kami, and since our Octopus has already gotten a card, I'm perfectly happy about that. Um, so I'm just gonna play out the Blade Master. Screw it. Get in with everybody. And there's no great options for them here. Yep. So now we ninjutsu. Pick up the beetle. Yep. That's got the death touch now. Mm hmm Cool. That worked out pretty well. Oh no. <laughs> beetle on my beetle. That's no fun. And Archer, for sure. Okay. Ooh, suit up was a good draw. Um, hmm. How am I gonna play this, though? So I'm definitely attacking with the Blade Master. I definitely don't feel like attacking with the Prowler into their Virus Beetle. I mean, the suit up does make that better. But it's just too suspicious if I attack with the Apprentice and not the Prowler, right? I think I am just going to crew there. Oh, wait, they could... Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to attack like this. Um, because I'm happy getting, you know, one bad attack in here so I can suit up. But if I attack with the Prowler too, then the, yeah, they would block the Archer on the suit, and then the Prowler on the Beetle, and then we have two bad attacks, and we can't accommodate for both. Plus, this prevents them from ninjutsuing back their Virus Beetle, uh, because we have something left back to corrupt the Brute Suit. 
Uh huh. Okay. Nothing. Um, uh, why didn't they run out their chef? I mean, uh, could be flash things, I guess. But all I can really think is like the Wandering Emperor. They don't have the mana for that. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna crew here and attack with the other two. And if they got something, they got something. All right, we got two attacks. So now, if they have like a removal spell, then we can just do the thing back to dodge the removal spell, which will be very nice. It's not going to be the greatest Moonstar Specialist in the world. Does this have to bounce something? Or up to one target. Okay. So yeah, this does not have to bounce something, so you don't have to bounce their beetle or whatever. We don't want to. Um, why didn't we get a chance to ninjutsu there? Um... Oh, because that was before blocks. Okay. Um, yeah, that's fine. Mm. Counter there. Uh, and then I'll save my specialist. Mm. And a blocker. And are you dead? Okay. Ooh, long reach of night's pretty sweet here, too. I think I'm gonna go for the kill, though. Gonna sack it. <laughs> yep, okay, they're desperate. I think we got there. Uh huh. Alright! <laughs> We're crushing it with this artifact, uh, artifact aggro deck here. With no payoff. I'm liking it. All right, three wins. Wow. Um, again, I, I feel like that showed off kind of the upsides and downsides of the Iron Apprentice there. It did a pretty good job in combat and trading off with the Beetle and then putting a counter on a thing. That was perfectly fine, but it wasn't good. Um, yeah, I'm really glad we mulliganed that hand in the beginning. Good God. Uh. Okay. <laughs> um. Double Iron Apprentice, nothing to back them up is definitely quite awkward. But I don't think it's quite worth shipping either. So I guess I'll keep it. Uh huh. Okay. Apprentice. Now, if we get a hacker this next turn. That's really going to be a great draw for us. No hacker, okay. I'll run out the apprentice first, that way we have something to put the counter on if they try to trade this off. And they do. Okay. Yep, there we go. So this puts all of its counters in something else, which is nice. Oh, and it's gone. Alright. We'll just stare at each other, I guess. You got ugh more spirit companions. That's very annoying. I don't think we clawing tormented though. Maybe we should have killed it so they can't ninja to it back. Oh no ninja to rewarded. Okay. That thing. Ugh, it's also just not worth killing, right? I mean, it does attack past or Kami. Sure, I'll we'll kill it. Oh my god, I should have played the Eater of Virtue first. Oh, that's a misplay. Oh, whoops. What was I thinking? Ooh. <laughs> oh, that was bad. It's okay, I'll delete it on route from the video. No one will have to know. <laughs> uh huh. Oh man. I'm still gonna keep back my Clawing Torment. I just don't feel like a random spirited companion when they have no ninjutsu going on is worth killing. Yeah.
I, I think I don't even want to kill something with this. I, I want to get that trigger for the upkeep. You lose a life because this is going to be a long, grindy game. If I can stick this on something like the moth or whatever and make it an awkward attacker, um, that sounds like the best use of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this moth's going to come down as a 2 4. And if this becomes a 1-3 that can't block, it's just not doing much of anything. Uh, okay, that's annoying. Get back their spirit companion. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, completion that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Specialist, sure. Um, I guess I will need to back my Kami of Terrible Secrets. Um, are they gonna block here? Probably not. Just get in. There's a jump, okay. Well, in that case, maybe we just specialist bounce the maw? No, because they're, they're just going to get this 2-2 two, two first strike, so running out the specialist for no value is just so bad. Um, I'm going to quit clawing torment that. Make it a 1-1 one, one first strike that can't block. That sounds fine to me. Yeah, you know what? I think it's from... Mm, Wow, that's tough. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go on the aggro here. Good. Bounce the moth. Pass the turn. Yeah, because they're gonna get this bad 2 2. If they wanna replay their saga, it's gonna take them like two whole more turns in order to turn it back into a creature. It's just not doing anything. Oh, that's annoying. Okay. Yeah, I'm kinda punished. Um. Alright, no blocking. Get in. Mm -hmm. Alright. They're on the clock. Oh. And now so are we. That's scary. Oh. <laughs> I'm happy to see that. Um... Yeah, we'll just run it out. Now, we still can't profitably block the Skyscraper, which is quite awkward. Um, none of these have abilities if you want to eat or virtue to pick up. Um, is there any reason to run out our lands? I don't think so, right? Because this triggers if we have one or fewer cards in hand. This triggers on our draw step. Um, sure, I'll turn that, whatever. Oh, man, this is, this is close. Skyscraper. Really threatening to get us here. Oh, man. Can that, oh my gosh. Are we gonna lose? Wow, they didn't attack with a skyscraper. Um. Sure, I'll save myself one damage. I'm so confused. Um. Hmm. This can give life link. That's pretty interesting, actually. I'm gonna keep that. I think we're not even gonna do it in, but we'll just play it, giving death touch and life link to our Kami. So they're gonna have to like either chump or trade it. Yeah. Okay. Interestingly, uh, if this dies, our Eater of Virtue gives life link, doesn't it? Uh, yep. That was more or less predictable. Um, let's Virus Beetle. Maybe we should have done Virus Beetle first. Pitch the Moths. Wow. The Moths would have been really good for them to throw on the Skyscraper. Um, can this re-equip? Yeah, let's re-equip this to the flyer. Let's 
yeah, they're gonna have to try to kill us this turn. Alright, with their 4-3 and their 9-8. It's possible. Wow! Invoke Justice, get back to the mods. Oh my god. <laughs> Is that it? Are we dead? I think we're dead. Wow! Oh my god. What a game. Done in by my own virus beetle? Is that what just happened? <laughs> oh my god. What a game. Wow, and for exactly lethal. Alright, good job, opponent. That was pretty sweet. Very, very nice. Okay. What do we have here? Uh, looks fine. Just a slightly janky curve of random creatures. I'll take it. I think I will run out the Prowler on two if they don't have anything. Now if they play like a Virus Fuel or something, I will definitely not. Um, that I am happy to trade the Prowler off for though, so. I'll burn it out. I'm gonna burn a removal spell on my random two drop. What are you looking at? Well, I'm definitely going for the trade here. Sure. I don't know what to be afraid of. I mean, we could get hit, of course, by the, um, the three mana pump spell, the suit up. But that just puts them so far off tempo that I'm willing, and we don't really care about this creature at all, so I'm willing to make that offer, and it looks like it paid off. Yeah, and I'm going to run out the circuit mender here because to kind of play around removal spell. Um, and they really don't want to remove that. Okay, are you going to bounce my circuit mender? <laughs> Alright, I'll take it. Hell yeah. Um, sweet. I guess I'll run out the suit. Some extra pressure. So they're gonna return that bad 2-drop to their hand. Which is fine, and then they're gonna get a 3-3, three, three, which is annoying. Hopefully though, we were able to pick up another land here so that we can completion down the 3-3 three, three flyer. Alright, that's annoying, but not quite scary yet. Um... Hmm. Yeah, I guess this just means that means we're uh, running out the Circuit Mender. And then, are we attacking or blocking here? Um... I think we're blocking. Yep, here comes the big flyer. Ugh, okay. That's annoying. Mm-hmm. So, obviously, now if I block and stuff, and the... He, uh, Go Yamazaki can bring this back. Um... But... I think I'm going to hedge and hope that we get our land and have that guy down. Otherwise, we're just taking so much damage. Um, and we did not get there. Now, I could still get there by attacking, clawing, tormenting it down. Whatever they block with. Yeah, okay. Okay, there was our land. Yeah, now we can torment. Kill it. Run our land, run out a random creature, pass it back. That was close. 
Our opponent thankfully looks like they're flooding a bit. That should be helpful. No ninjutsu back the saga, that's nice. Not sure why they held back their two drop though. That is interesting. Um hmm. Well, let's try to get in. What could they have that they need all seven of their mana for on my turn? I'm very confused. I mean, <laughs> Whole Break Horror was from the last set, right? <laughs> Not this one. Nothing. Um, okay. Hmm. I feel like this long reach night is not getting any better, and we're not dying that fast, so I don't need a completion right now. I'm just gonna run this out. See what they do. I I just do not know what they could have up here. Um, okay. Sure. Okay. And now are they just gonna slam the crab? Yeah, there it is. Kind of funny, this ability here has not really been doing much against us, because... <laughs> what? Oh no, we can't play 7 drops. <laughs> um, okay. Now... Bold and Speakable is pretty sweet, and it is also something that we'd like to get down sooner rather than later, but I feel like we can definitely wait on it a little bit longer. Um, yeah, we don't need to refill our hand quite yet. This thing has Menace, so we will be able to just attack past that crab and ninjutsu stuff back if we so choose. Um, let's see, this is Ward 3, so if I ninjutsu this, I won't be able to actually hit the crab. Um, hmm. Yeah, you know, I think I'm going to run out this artifact, not equip it, so that we have our Death Toucher, and then completion now to avoid counter crab counter spells. Tap that down, and then yeah, we'll just use our Blade Master to hold down the fort against this crab. And yeah, if they want to waste a removal spell on that, that's fine. Yep. Okay, they continue to flood a bit. If we hit by a crab, it's annoying, but fine. Land, okay. If that comes. Now I think we slam. Behold. That allows our Animus to block the crab. Another Reality Heist, okay. This is the best I've ever seen Reality Heists. This card just looks so bad. Wow, and they got two artifacts both times. Alright. That's pretty good. Hmm. That Dragon Spark reactor is actually quite scary. Yeah. Because, yeah, now they're gonna run out. Artifact. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that thing's sticking up. Now, do they go for the crab attack? No, they don't. Okay. Because, yeah, they could attack with the crab, fire off the reactor early to, uh, to kill the Animus after blocks, um, but yeah, understandably they're not going for that. Um, don't think we really need suit up. Actually, that will give our thing a base 4 power, when it currently is going to be plus 6. It's actually kind of interesting. Maybe I will just draw both. Huh. <laughs> So, how's this going to work? So I guess I'll uh, 
attack? Am I really attacking? So wait, if I attack and it becomes four plus two plus four, that clocks for ten. So I can definitely kill whatever they block, but they probably won't block, in which case we specialist can we specialist bounce the crab now? No, we still can't. Um, I like throwing lots of damage, though. Because we just wait for this reactor and card draw and stuff. It's going to get us in the end. Nothing. Okay. So, I'll just make him take the hit here. Uh-huh. Get our card draw. Okay. Um. So let's see. Deals damage turns into one target creature. Okay, so this will target me, so I can't sack the thing away to prevent the damage to me. Um. I think I am still just going to pass, though, because maybe they'll play one artifact, try to reactor it down, and then we suit up. That also is a decent sequence for us. And of course, if nothing happens, which I doubt, then we'll be able to thirst for knowledge. This is an interesting game. Yep, we're not the Ronin. I think this means they're gonna fire off the reactor. Ooh, okay. So now the reactor is actually dealing five damage. Now we're in trouble. This will be gaining us life, though. dead. Ah! <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Wow. Close games. Close, close, close. Because, yeah, I think on our backswing there, we would have been attacking for another 10 with Menace. Ah. Uh, crazy games. I honestly just feel like the format is getting more fun as it goes on. People are trying out, kind of figuring out how to draft these unconventional decks. All right. Uh, curving out bad creatures, I'll take it. That's what we came here to do. Hmm. Okay, Great to new keep not super scared of that. Uh, we'll just keep playing our curve, getting in. Um, we'll get in. Happy to trade. Yep. We'll go for the ninjutsu. Give it death touch and life link. Yep. Put the counter on our guy. Get in. Just 
to make sure that they have to play a blocker this turn, otherwise they're in trouble. And if they don't, then we can always uh, play the Infiltrator and then equip it up. Okay. Um, huh. What does this mean, though? I guess this means we just attack, and they have to block the octopus. We just get a free damage in. Yeah. And we'll run out the infiltrator again. We need to run out the Kami quite yet. Um, I could reconfigure. I... Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I will, though. Sure. Okay. That card's pretty good. Really hoping to be able to slam this behold this turn here. And we do. Okay. Mm-hmm. So now they can run out their greater Tanuki. Fine. They're gonna have a couple of giant creatures though, so we really need to find something to do with this Behold the Unspeakable. Some way to clear out the nonsense. Their creatures are just so small. Um, I don't think either of those are getting there. Okay. Uh, well, we can still, <laughs> we can actually threaten to trade our Iron Apprentice for the Tanuki, strangely enough, because Suit Up will make it a 4-5 with a 1-1 counter. Um, I think I want to draw my card to hit land drops, though. Yeah, you know what, let's get in first. With both of these see what happens. Okay. Taking the bait, sure. So this will make it a 5-6, right? Yeah. Okay. Put the counter on... that thing, I guess. And we could equip... So they're going to play that giant creature. Octopus won't be able to do anything about it anyways. And having the thing on the flyer seems nice. So I think I am going to reconfigure it now. Yeah, now we have a completion to deal with the branch. It might get feisty and get in with the cuff. Okay. Yeah, we're not getting with that infiltrator anytime soon. Why does every single creature have reach? <laughs> oh my god. I'm surprised they didn't try to channel that. I guess they have something else to do with their mana this turn. Unfortunately, we can't, we still can't get through these Reach creatures this turn. Um, but we can lock one of them down, which is nice. In fact, let's see, they could have safekeeping up, I guess. Huh. That would be brutal. Actually, I think I'd rather them play safekeeping on our turn rather than their turn, because it also gives indestructible. So what I'll do is I'll try to completion. If they have the safekeeping, then, you know, they get us, whatever. Um, yeah. Because if I try to do this in their turn, and they give it indestructible, then we'll be able to double block it. And I think we're going to need to start trying to block that, so. Okay, it worked. Oh, yeah, <laughs> it removes the abilities, so it actually just dies. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, no attacks. It's a 
ability was to give it a plus one plus one, it was a zero zero. Nothing? Okay. Yeah, they're getting punished for not channeling the archer. Um, why did I play that land? <laughs> um, yeah, I feel, feel like we just still don't have good attacks, and I'm happy to get my card draw. Or run out a couple creatures. I think I'm leaning towards the run out a couple creatures plan. Because, oh man, I mean, it'll make our vision a lot smaller, though. That's also part of the problem. Hmm. Yeah, what happens if we attack with our Infiltrator and just threaten to pump it? Um, that just does not seem very powerful. I'm going to go for our card draw and see if we come up with anything better. Sort of better, I guess. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to no attacks. I might even reconfigure onto the Vision. Will I do that? Yeah, I think I will. So I think our plan now is to just get more cards in hand such that we have six toughness on our vision. And therefore the double block doesn't stop us. Um, would I trade my Infiltrator and Kami for that? I think so. Well, because only one of them is going to die unless they have the trick. I think I would throw both in front. I just can't take four damage every turn. Wow, okay. That's annoying. Yikes. Um, okay. So now we can threaten to pump the Infiltrator. So, do I equip first? Four, five, six, seven. I think I will. I could also ninjutsu it back, but then we lose our counter. I'm just gonna... get in. Nothing, okay. Yeah, cause this way, we get our card. We get a Death Toucher. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, okay. That's scary. Oh, <laughs> Maybe not so scary. Um, cool. Well, I still can't... Oh, I can pump. Okay. Yeah, we just completion that down. And tap for mana or something, I guess. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we can threaten to pump, so we'll keep attacking here. Blocks, so I think I'm going to ninjutsu back the Blade Master. Lose out on a point of damage, but get a card. Uh huh. Very nice. Yep, and I guess we'll run out of the Blade Master again. Could have run out the suit to deal maximum damage, but I don't think it really matters. I imagine there's some reconfiguring that's probably going to go on, but it doesn't really matter. We're going to Clawing Torment down the Archer. Okay. So they can get back their aura, which will then make this no longer a creature, which will then kick off our aura. Mm-hmm. That works. That was a pretty good draw for them. 
Oh, interesting. The uh, cultivation's still on the cuff. Hmm. Uh, I feel like our attacks are still good here. Ooh, wait, no, they're not. Oh, man, I punted. I forgot the thing has reach. Um, oh, but that's fine, right? Yeah. Um, sure. And then, what? Mender, game some life. Suit. Um, and I think I'm gonna hold back on the torment for another turn so we can max out our man efficiency here and run out these this thirst for knowledge. They're still gonna leave back behind something to block next turn anyway, so no reason to run it out quite yet. We're a nice healthy life total, so I'm not super worried about getting aggroed by this 4-5. It is definitely commanding the board, though. Okay. Sure. I feel like that's not super helpful for them. I wonder why they're doing this. Maybe they're trying to pump up their power enough so that they can do, like, a big kick again or something. No, just have that, okay. Okay. Alright. Let's run this out. Uh, no thanks. I'll discard two lands. Trash bot is sweet. Okay. Um, so now we can... Yeah. Torment on that. No more blocking. And then... One, six, seven, eight, okay. Yeah, we'll just run out the trash bot. Crew it up. Oh, we should have crewed the hackers. We're not attacking with it. Whatever. Um, do we attack with everything, actually? So I think can't block... So let's say they block the hacker... They take four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, this should be lethal. Yeah. So now, we just pump. We might as well trade it off. And then they die from the trigger. Yep, we get some cards. Sure. I would like to draw cards. Thank you. Alright, you're dead. <laughs> Sweet! I'll take it. I'll take it, I'll take it. Alright, and we're doing pretty well so far. Four wins, we just need one more to, to break even. Not too bad. Not too bad for such a kind of janky deck, but we're doing it. I kind of wish we got a late, um, you're already dead. I feel like that also would have been pretty sweet in our deck. And usually those things, in my experience at least, tend to, to wheel around quite a bit, but not today they didn't. Uh, hands okay. We're on the draw, which makes our hacker certainly a lot worse, especially when we don't have a one drop. One drop? Uh, not the one drop I was hoping for, but sure. So this means that pretty much no matter what, I am going to try to run out my hacker. Oh, interesting. Um, hmm, maybe not then. So, because I'm thinking like, okay, run out the hacker, right, and they're definitely going to want to block it, but I can 
Prowler pre-combat to give it lifelink and death touch, and then our Eater Virtue just gives everything lifelink and death touch if they block it, which is going to be so awkward for them. I think I like that line. So even though, you know, I could run this out and then try to just do it back and all that stuff, I feel like this puts more pressure on them, assuming that they don't have, like, a random kill spell or something, in which case, it's fine. Sure, okay. Yeah, see, neither plan would have worked out anyways then. Uh, that's annoying. Okay. Hmm. Well, in that case, what do we do? I think I'm gonna do kind of the same thing, but with the octopus. Let's see what happens. Opponent's looking at it. Uh, makes me think they have another removal spell, in which case, yeah, we are kind of in trouble, I think. blocking anything. If you got a tech wrecker, you win. Okay, they don't. Very nice. Okay. Um, let's go for the... The Prowler first. Hmm. Yeah, let's go for the Prowler. I feel like they have something, and I'm just not sure what the best way to play around that something is. What is going on? Maybe I won't equip the Eater of Virtue, because... Okay. Yeah, see now I can bargain, sack the thing, kind of get the maximum value out of it. Okay. A little bit awkward, the game so far. I think we're doing okay. Really awkward that the bargain makes you gain life equal to the value of the thing that you sacrifice, but you really do not want to be sacrificing big things, you want to be sacrificing small things. Not yet, okay. Very interesting. Um. Now, the Kami could be a good blocker on this board. Um, and, I mean, they've burned a lot of removal spells. Okay. Yeah, and that gives him... Oh, maybe I'm not. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to get the long reach while I still can. we got plenty of life. I'm not too worried. I imagine they're probably going to stack the... Oh, no they don't. Okay. Because they could stack the Kami if they had an enchantment in their hand, because then they could just get the Kami back to their hand and then discard it again and all that. But they didn't, and... It's pretty good for us. Okay. No blocks. Yeah, now we get draw off our Kami. What's she gonna do? Yep, makes sense. Um, why are you tapping like that? 
the Kami Terrible Secrets. We have an artifact and an enchantment. Cool. Um, sure, we'll run this out. Go ahead. Now I feel like we're doing all right. Wow, another Kami Transcendence. That's interesting. That was a good draw, too. I'm gonna go ahead and fire that off. Sure. Um... We'll discard those, too. Um... I think I start getting with my flyer. Yeah. Because they still just have no good attacks. And there are very few things that I feel like could get them through this Kami of Terrible Secrets. It would have to be like Pump Spell or something. Because any of the burn spells won't won't punch through. Okay. Um, sure, I'll just slam the Behold. And keep poking them with my Flyer. Feeling pretty good about this game so far. A little bit of an awkward start in the beginning, but we're getting there. Uh, could also be a free attack with my Kami here, since it's not blocking a whole lot anyways. Yeah, why not? Now my other attackers are both only hitting for one, so their attacks still would just get blocked and it won't matter anyways, but I'll get my free tax when I can. Alright. Get our scry to draw too. Uh don't think I need that, but I'll take the Blade Master, sure. Uh let's take that last card out of their hand first though. Uh, it's probably another land, but I'm happy to get rid of a land actually because that prevents them from being able to dump mana into bearer memory, because this thing costs an absurd six mana. Oh wow, cool. Um in that case, I'm not gonna play out my land just yet. Let's get in like that. And then run out of Blade Master. And that Death Touch Menace should be quite annoying for them to deal with. And uh, yeah, I think we've turned the corner. We're doing pretty well now. This will be great to ninjutsu back to behold if we ever attack with it, but I think we might just win before then. Yep, here we go. Now I could start attacking with the Animus. Um, but I'm gonna wait one more turn before I start getting too aggressive here. Yeah, once I get down this extra attacker and then the completion something down, I think we'll be in the position where um, we just go for an all out swing. Uh, yep. No effects for me. Now, of course, we are going to end up going a little bit lower on you know, cards in hand for our uh, flyer here by running this out, and then we're also running out the land for the Tamiya's completion. But that's fine. Like I said, I kind of want to be ninjutsuing back to vision anyways. Okay, that's annoying. Yep, we put the counter on. So, okay. Um... Sure. I guess I'll let them go to attacks. See if we can just kill them. Okay. 
So let's tap down... I don't know. That, I guess. Mm-hmm. Okay. And... I think it's getting with everything time. Count again. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I guess we just let it happen. That's the win, right? Cool. I'll take it. Still doing really well. We're at five and two. We might even get up to seven. Um, that Blade Master has been doing surprisingly well as a three mana three two menace death touch. It's really kind of helped us turn the corner on some of those games and threaten to block big green creatures. And I'm reasonably happy with it in this deck. Yep, keep it. go. Green, blue, huh? Lowest color combo. Yep. I'll just start curving out with strange creatures. See what happens. Now, green, blue typically is going to have some kind of splash color too, like white for Imperial Oath. Um, do I get in and threaten that you're already dead? I think I do. Yep. Bad. Okay. Kind of hoping to get an island this turn so I can completion into Kami, get our maximum card value. Uh, this should be okay though. So, go Eater, yeah, and then I guess put it on the Circuit Mender, and then we can get in for four, and then we could even ninja to it back to get an extra card, which I think I will do, yeah. A little bit mana inefficient here, because now we have to re-equip and all that, but... Anytime I can bounce a circuit mender is a, a good time. Yep. Gain some life. Sure. And then opponent gets their card draw. Yep. hasn't done much. We haven't put much pressure on them either. Also kind of surprised I haven't seen their splash color yet, but they have one. It's random 1-4 reach has been so annoying to us <laughs> these last couple games. Which, I mean, from my experience playing that card, it is quite bad. So, it's a bit surprising that it's actually doing anything. Wow, they're just getting in with it too. I mean, I guess this means that they're trying to ninja do something, so I'll block. Okay. I mean, are they gonna go swamp you already dead? I'm not sure what's happening. Not a board wipe either, because they're not the right colors for that. 
Yeah, I'm a little bit confused by that attack. Uh, I guess maybe that was signaling to me that they have the suit up. Maybe that's what they were going for and they forgot. Uh, yeah, I'm just very confused. Anyways, for next turn, I mean, we can always just equip the Eater and then play a Circuit Mender and keep crunching if they don't do anything. Yep, which seems to be the case. Um, I guess I'll put this on the flyer. Okay. If anyone's gonna die, I prefer it be the flyer so we can get our eater value. Run this out. Is it counterspell? No? I am so confused. You know what? Maybe our opponent is mana screwed out of their splash color, and they just have all splash colors in their hand. Okay, so yeah, now we get to see the truth on that. Whoa, they just got another island, okay. I'm so confused. I feel like if I were them, if I was on five lands, I'd just hold it. We just draw my other land so I can run that out. Oh, okay, they had multiples. Okay. That makes me think that they definitely just drew that land that turn. Um... Okay. Well, I think I just get to get a free attack in with my Infiltrator, because if they block, I can pump. Yep. And then... I guess we go Beetle. I guess they were trying to ninja do when they got that attack in. Um, I'm gonna equip here so that this creature threatens to trade with the Tanuki. Really, really would like to get a blue mana for our completions. That would uh, probably steal off this game here. That is a wild alternate art. Oh my gosh, this frog thing is so cute. I want it. Oh no! Brutal. Wow. That is scary. No block, you got it. Damn. Okay. Um, huh. Man, we still can't get our card draw for Kami. It's so brutal. So if I play this, and then equip the Eater to it, we have three, we'll have a total of five power in the battlefield, so we can block the Tanuki. But it certainly is awkward. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's what we're doing. I mean, we get Trample on our Eater, I guess, but... Awkwardly, the Eater is kind of hurting us a bit compared to a Bone Splitter because it's making us exile these creatures that don't even have abilities, and thus reducing our graveyard count for the trash bot. A little bit awkward. But yeah, that, that kick just really uh, caused a lot of problems there. Oh, oh no. Server. Arena. Hello. Okay, we're back. <laughs> that was scary. Um, if I block with everything, how rough is this for us? Maybe I just... No. I'm just not gonna block.
Oh no, the tech wrecker. That is brutal. Man. I only take our bone splitter, okay. Yeah, I'm I'm okay with that. Oh man, still no blue. Well I think I think I really just wanna run this out now. Even though it doesn't do anything. Just to get us some more blockers for this Tanuki. Yep, it goes there, there, there. And I'm much more okay with this trade than the previous one. So at least now we still get a big trash bot now. Yep. Okay. Uh, no! <laughs> um... Okay. No attacks. Man. Such an awkward game here. The mana screw. Yeah, and now we can't block the trainee. Because they can pump it with the bearer, and then it pumps itself. Oh, no attack. Okay, I'll take it. There's the blue, okay. <laughs> oh, that's rough. Um, what do we do now? I guess we're just gonna have to completion something, so. No attacks yet. Yeah, we'll let him pump with the bearer. And then I think we actually just completion down the bearer, because it's gonna... Oh, perfect. It's just gonna keep pumping things every turn and making things really awkward for us. Oh no! Wait, what? Could have bounced our own guy, right? Turn, target... Yeah, they probably should have bounced their own guy. Um, okay. What do I do here? What do I do here? I think I'll start on the thirst for knowledge. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't think we want this anymore anyways. Okay, so now we're getting more blue mana, which is very good for us. Run out the trash pot again. They do have an artifact, right? Yeah, the sphere. Okay. It's pretty good. Uh, yep, no blocks. Yep. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, kind of like running this out, too. I mean, I actually know. They can, they can just sack the bear. Whew, okay. Hmm. Very awkward. Very, very awkward. I'm gonna get in. They are on an awkwardly low life total here. Hmm. I think I will Jitsu. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Good. So that means doesn't mean. We can run this out. It's three mana. Not quite enough to do anything. We can run this out. Bounce the trainee. Keep us alive a little longer. Then run out, like, Clawing Torment on the Puzzle Maker. Seems fine. Hmm. You can also put it on, like, the Nah, yeah, I'll do that. Bounce you back. Okay. Torment. Now you got this awkward 
creature that can't attack, I mean, can't block, uh, deals no damage, so it can't really attack much either, and keeps draining them. If, of course, if they got a nin ninja to bounce it back, then that sucks for us, but I think this is kind of our path to victory at this point. Take advantage of the fact that they don't really have much power on the board and try to grind him out with the Clawing Torment. Because we do have the completion for the Living Breakthrough, which is good. Now, if they have a ninja in their hand, that's going to be pretty interesting, because they really would like to bounce the Puzzle Maker, but they'd also really like to bounce the Tech Wrecker. Oh, sure. Yep. That's fine. So I guess this means they just kind of have nothing. They're just spending a lot of money, I mean, a lot of uh, mana to do pretty minimal damage to us here. Are we gonna re equip? Yeah, this tells me that they just have kind of nothing. Ooh, okay, so now that's annoying. Now yeah, they can get a lot of life back. Okay. Huh. Well, at least that. Oh, we can't cast fours because of the living breakthrough. So wait. Until your next turn. Okay. So I can run this out. Yeah. But I can't do anything else. And I guess I complete on upkeep in case they draw. Can't mean completion. I mean, um, can mean safekeeping. Sorry. Get in with the Kami. Um. Sure. Do I trade off my creatures for that? They're not really going to be able to attack past the Tech Wrecker anyways. Uh, we're on a huge clock. I think I'm going to trade them off. Sure. Yep, Ninja 2. Yep. Oh, this is brutal. Cause now they can bounce a blocker. And... Oh, no, they don't. Yeah. So much mana, oh my god. Um, let's start off on this. Yep. Really like to get my card draw off on the Kami. We're running out of stuff to do here. Let's see, if they do attack with everything, what do we even block? Because they can just bear memory twice, right? Oh, maybe they can't anymore. Wait, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they can only bear memory once. Um, so which would I rather? I can't take the damage here, right? So, uh, okay. <laughs> this thing has trample. So if I... So if I suit up, oh my gosh, this is close. So they can put me, they can pump once, do seven damage, put me to three, I attack back, four, um, I think I'm just gonna take it. Yeah. No! Oh, <laughs> uh, that's the opposite of what I wanted to see. 
Uh, yikes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they don't play it? Okay. Back the thing, sure. Let's see, so I have eight, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have nine mana, oh my gosh. Well, might as well do this then, since I can still do both those. Okay, well I'm gonna go for it. Attack with Trash Bot. And if they block wrong, then the suit up pumping its base power will be enough. So if they just block here, then the power is going to go up to 12, tramples over, and then they die. What a game. Okay, so they don't take the bait. Wow, they're playing around that pretty well, too, because now the suit up doesn't even save the trash bot. Just barely. So they block here. I think I don't even suit up. Oh, maybe I do. Okay. Yeah, cause now the suit up lets me kill all of those. Right, because it's going to go up to 12. So I think I will do it. Well, five, yep. Okay. So... Then I can just run this out. Hmm. Did we survive? <laughs> I got so much mana. So they can pump up things twice, but then they can't do anything else. Wow. So we have to block the bear memory. If they attack. Yeah. They just attack with that. Okay. And they can pump it twice. So, right, because it costs six to pump, right? Yeah, okay. So they can do seven, eight, 12, 13 mana. So they can pump twice. So that would be a... Five, four. So if I double block, I can kill it. But then I have nothing else going on. Except for this Kami coming down and this bad... I think I'm still going to do it, though. Because this, this pumping is going to get worse and worse as the game goes on. Yeah, and they're going to need to actually do the double pump. Waste their whole turn doing that in order to trade-off effectively with both. I don't know what they drew, but maybe this prevents them from playing a relevant thing if they drew a relevant thing. I mean, this prevents them from playing that, but I think they want to keep that in their hand anyways. Uh, okay. Well... I guess I'm just passing. Oh man. It's so awkward because I don't want either of those things to get bounced back to their owner's hands here. Yeah, so I guess we'll go there. And then when they go for the bounce or kill or whatever, then I think I'm just gonna eat it. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm just gonna eat it. Because replaying it just does so much nothing. Oh no! <laughs> and it's just more lands. Not like this. Oh, okay. They got us. 
Good game. That was sweet. Alright. Well. Didn't quite get to seven wins. Um. But I think we broke even. So, I'll take it. Let me just double check here. Deck was sweet. Definitely had some issues. Yeah, we went five and three. So, just fine. The Eater of Virtue, I think, was kind of at its best. Um, with all the kind of random, you know, one ones and uh, virus beetles and all that stuff. Plus, the Nozomi Prowler threatening to, you know, give it permanent lifelink and stuff that didn't matter. Uh, overall, I think the deck was, was fine. I'm a little bit surprised it actually did as well as it did. Uh, worst card in our deck was probably that Reckoner's Bargain. Uh, maybe we should have slotted in the Puzzle Maker over it, um, or the Shadow Walker, but there just wasn't a ton of options. And uh, I think that's where I'm going to call it. I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye.